like it's it's the tragedy commons, it's like it some some of the resources that we have, the natural resources that we have that used to be so common are gone, are uh, like becoming really rare. Like the water in our in California, like that used to be like, oh we had a bunch of water and now it's like all gone and we're like fighting to get more water. Good. Yeah, that's a good start to it. So there are resources that are no longer available that used to be. There's a good discussion happening over here, too. Somebody mind sharing with? Um, so, like, some people might take more than they need, and then, the, and then they'll use what they need, but then they'll waste and something will happen to the leftovers, so then people who actually need it don't get it because people will waste it. Good. So combining those two ideas, yes, some, there's some overuse, and then some people that don't have access to the, those resources anymore. Good. And let's make this our last thought, because we do have yeah, some more feedback to do. Yeah. So, go ahead, Satya. Okay. Um, uh, tragedy of the common, I think, is when some person is like, oh, well, I get to do this, but if, like, the loss is only this much, so it won't really affect the world. But then everyone else is doing it, so, uh, like, if you don't eat your dinner that night and then it goes in the trash, then how many other people aren't finishing their dinners and going in the trash? That adds up. So it just, it's a gain that you have, but everyone else has their little loss adding up to it. So it's a, like a cumulative effect of all these decisions that people make. Sierra, really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's common, it's really easy, and we're, no offense, but we're really lazy as people, especially when things come to us. So we take and take and take, not thinking about how much we're taking, and we don't think about the change. Even if it's a positive or a negative, it still affects something. Okay, and did anybody make it to the end where they were talking about like policies and laws? So at the end of the article, they were talking about this is why that there are policies and laws to help manage these common resources. So we, that's a, a theme that we'll be coming back to throughout the project is how do we manage these limited natural resources. There's a link in the agenda. It says podcast flowchart. <laughs> One region is North America, Northern Americas, and another region is Sub-Saharan Africa. Another region is the Middle East and Northern Africa. So students, the teams have different focus regions, and they're researching the state of natural resources today. So they have there are several natural resources that they're looking at, like forests, arable, farmable land. Um, they're also looking at the air quality and water quality. And they're predicting in the future what are some predictions about how those resources will change, um, specifically with relation to climate change. So they're learning about the carbon cycle, climate change, ecology. And then mixed in there, they're also learning about human rights and about other parts of the world. Back to what we were just working on. Um, so what we're going to be doing in the spring is a, a fundraiser, an athletic fundraiser event. So we haven't finalized what that might be, but it could be like a, you know, a, a fun run or some sort of fitness event where the students are going to be raising money for UNICEF to go to some of these human rights violations that may exist in different parts of the world. Um, a, a lot can be attributed to lack of natural resources. And so we're tying those two together in that way. So the physical education is them training for this year-long event, or the year-end event that we'll be raising money for, for you to sign.
realized in their podcast that it's harder to find information on like the Middle East and North Africa separately. So can we combine the information? Sure. But split like the different topics. Yeah, you have some creative freedom now. So Benchmark One was really structured so that you do a lot of research. It's totally up to you how you structure your podcast as long as it addresses these three things and it is your focus region. Like, Some teams are focusing even only on one thing. So it's up to you if you want to focus on four. Yeah. Like animals and people together. You could do that. Sure. That would be a lot. I mean, the narrower the focus, probably the more in depth you can go. It has to be at least eight minutes, right? Yeah, eight to ten minutes. Can it be like nine minutes so we can have like a little break? Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight to ten is the range. Outline mm -hmm. that you had on there. Yes. Uh, do we have access to it? You sure do. Where? If you click on the agenda or benchmark two, either one. Okay, so I have an example benchmark up here. I just wanted to pause and point out how your benchmark one can be used to make your benchmark two. A lot of people I've noticed are starting from scratch, it looks like. They're assigning new topics and starting to research new things. But you already did all of this research. So you should be starting with benchmark one and checking it out and identifying what are some of the topics that really stood out to your team. Okay, so like, because for mine, I'm doing forest. So mm -hmm. would some good questions be like, what is the problem? Absolutely, and then, yeah. Um, what, um, what are some solutions? And then what can other people do to help? That yeah, okay. if, the, if you find research on that, you don't feel like you have to solve everything though. The yeah. purpose of the podcast is really to draw attention and awareness to the issue, so there may not be a clear solution at this time. Yeah. So that would be I fun. found a really good website with those exact okay. things, so it's like I should use that, that would be a good so it's nice. be water. Yeah. Well, you have, there is a, a column on there for water, so if you go back to benchmark one, and scroll to where it says water, fresh water. But how about if there's unpolluted water? Unpolluted means not polluted. And we also, when we say fresh water, we mean unpolluted water. Yep. So it means like water that can be used for farming or human consumption. So basically fresh water is fresh water that's clean and polluted or Yep, and polluted means it's not, uh, it either is going to take money and resources to unpollute it, to clean it out, or it's water that can't be used by people. So can we just change it to polluted water? So I'm going to explain what we have to do. Well, the, the resource is fresh, unpolluted water. So, yeah, you're going to, the topic would be fresh water. Oh, okay. How are we doing here, folks? Nice, I love seeing you around the benchmark one. Excellent. Yeah. So can we just like say that um, we did like a lot of research about it and then we could just like talk about what we researched on so we don't have to like find new things to talk about? No, if you feel like you, you already did very thorough research, you don't, today you're not gonna worry about researching. Today you're just making a plan. You probably will wanna do more research after today mm -hmm. once you have your your uh, flow chart already? Yeah. So what are the topics that your team is going to focus on? Forest in Europe. Forests in Europe? Okay, yeah. great. And then it's going to be like the state of the trees and like, because they wanted to focus on trees and wildlife since it's what's in the forest. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And there Absolutely. are some projects where they do come up with the question. Uh, we'll give sure. them a topic or they come up with any question and then we design kind of a project that fits in there. So we're always create, researching and using the internet and talking with other teachers, um, other biologists. We, refer, right. we speak with biologists and doctors to try to get more information. Yeah, and that's another role of, of a teacher too is to bring in experts in certain fields. I think that's been really powerful for our students to have experts who are, who are willing to share what they do for a living, you know, in a topic that's relevant to their project. So it's showing that career connection as well. say, 
our first topic would be biodiversity, and you'll say, base, biodivi biodiversity is, and you just give like a basic definition of what it is. And then if you write it on this document, you can just copy and paste your parts onto the other one, so it'd be easier to go through the whole podcast. Mine is like a page. Is that okay? Like my script? Yeah. So it's not like if you're just, parts together, do we if you're just doing, page? everyone has to do their own there. parts. But um, you, we can work together on a group document so it flows nicely. Okay. So do you have anything for the region intro? I'll say, I'll say how, I'll say, I'll say today we'll be focusing on, I'll say we decided. On the effects of climate change in Australia. Wait. We decided to. Well, that's our topic in here. Look at this. Then what's the region Look at this. Oh, we talk about the region? Just say our top places we're focusing on are these places, and this is why. Like why, why they stood out to us. So I'm working on my benchmark too, but right now as a group, we're um, doing it on one script and then copying and pasting it on separate ones mm -hmm. so we have a better flow for when we put it all together. Okay. So each of you have already written your individual parts and now you're kind of looking at it as yeah. a whole picture? Like okay. To, um, yeah. And we have like the basic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a tip, I've read a few different types of scripts, and the ones that have been the most interesting to read is if they're writing as if they're writing to a friend, like as if you're writing a letter to a friend and you're telling them about this. Um, so if a next step can be to read through each other's writing and to look at the tone. Like, does the tone sound like a conversation, like how a podcast usually does? Okay. That would be ideal. Okay? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I've taken this class since the beginning of the year, and so far we've had, I think, three projects. This is our third project. Oh, our final product will be a finished podcast, along with like an introduction. We'll be showing it to the class when we're done. Uh, well, some of the fun things um, that I enjoy about doing the project is uh, being able to work in a group that uh, gets along so well that uh, we can get stuff done uh, along with having fun. And I also like uh, the experience of uh, the way that we're learning the new material is so much better than reading from a textbook or something more traditional like that. It's um, very um, inclusive with your uh, mind and it helps anyone, like if you learn may maybe more through verbal learning or um, reading, it can help with all different types. I was extremely frustrated <laughs> the first time. Uh, I have done fairly well as a student, but my first week I'm fairly used to like writing an essay and doing that and turning it in on my own or doing getting a math sheet and doing the math sheet and turning it in on my own until I got to high school. And the first thing was here, I think the first project we got in biofitness, we live in Napa, so it had to do with wine and vineyards and we had to decide what type of grape a vineyard should plant if they were going to replant their vines, what type of grape they should plant. And I knew nothing about grapes when I started the project. It's still one of my favorite projects to this day, looking back. It ended up going really well. I think I sat down with the group and went, okay, I've researched this, but here are my questions. And they went, oh, I know that. And suddenly it became a much more collaborative experience. And they were going, oh, wait, my parents own a winery. I know this about this. and Or I could Google that. And so then they were, they were look, researching different parts and it ended up coming together very nicely and it's still three years later one of my favorite projects I've ever I've ever done. Look at this equation. I'm only halfway done with it. So, why don't you just do it in parts? Because it's easier to do it all together. What if you mess up and you can't lose it? Oh, wow. Oh, I messed up. Can you reduce it? Yeah, I already did. Plus, it was originally plus 1,344 minus 600. I wonder if it will show up on the graph. Wait, wait, look at that. 86, 88 equals... Ah! 
Okay. And for point no, three, did he get thirty one over sixteen? Or let's point three. I didn't get a thirty one. Here, just go look at all these decimals. Where's your point three? Point three, I got it says it was line to how you know. And did Mr. Paisley say these were right? Well, he said my lengths were right. Your lengths? These are the right points. I'm going to show you the length. Um, so for length, how did you do the length? I'm going to show you. Okay. So you know the distance formula? Yeah. So look at my Desmos graph. So this is my Desmos graph, and I um, and so for the distance formula, we can choose either long side to measure, okay, um, and do the distance formula for. So I chose. I think I did. Well, I did 969, which is line, which was point three. 969. Oh, I, I just also, I rounded so these. The square root of, oh, you rounded, I did rounded he say it was okay? Yeah, he said it was, you, that's not what I did. Like, like that's not the points I got. No, but that's no, the right formula. For the yeah, it's like, it's, is it the right formula? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so I did 969, okay, here. So we're going to do this point four first. Why is it? Those weren't the points I got, though. Yeah, but they're. She got 11 over 8 and negative 1 over 4. I got. And negative 17 over 8. So some of them are right. Our project this week was uh, working on grid work and how to put that over a map and then from there add lines to it to make it uh, more math, I guess. Well, I've definitely noticed from in the past, I'll be struggling with something like learning algebra or something like that. And I'll just feel like I don't have anyone to ask help for help for because I don't have like a tutor or sometimes I'll feel like I don't feel comfortable asking the teacher for help. But when you work in a group, you feel I feel like I can talk to my group members if they're stronger in that particular area or I can help them. It can help you so much. I think that um, sometimes they can teach it even better than the way it's taught by teachers. Thank <laughs> you.